So this morning we are going to start in a squat pose. So when we take squat to begin, um, actually always when we take a squat malasana, take your feet super wide and most people need to turn their feet out in order to find it. I suggested having the blocks or pillows, especially for an early squat pose to kind of bring the floor up to you. So if you come down into squat and you're like kind of stuck and this is it, you definitely want to slide some blocks underneath and make it a little bit more passive. Uh, we definitely don't want to strain at this point. You don't want to strain the whole practice. So just come to your squat. You could sit on as many blocks as you need. The idea is to lengthen the tailbone and not tuck under, which is how a lot of us sit in our desk chairs and on the sofa and in our cars. So we're going to lengthen everything. You can bring your hands to a prayer if you're comfortable with that. Turn the fingers a little forward. Yeah, it's always an offering, the practice, to kind of offer this out to someone who probably needs it more than we do. Uh, close your eyes for a moment if that's available. And then just connect to a breath. Let the breath kind of run up and down your body, through your feet, lengthen your tailbone. Use the back of your triceps to gently kind of pry the inner thighs open. And then your goal in this moment is to see if you can sit up straight. So my mom's right here. She'll remind me to sit up straight. So, but the rest of you, I'll tell you, I'll remind you all to sit up straight. Yeah. And just reminding you, your feet are turned out, most of you. Back of your triceps are pressing actively against the inner part of your legs somewhere. Your tailbone is lengthening down. You're using a block if needed. And you're just connecting to a nice slow breath. Now as you sit here, focus on your feet. The arches of your feet begin to pull up. The outer blades of your feet press down. Your outer hips begin to grip in and your inner thighs are starting to open. Your groin is opening. You begin to lift your core, feel your ribs coil in, and lengthen your heart and your chest a little bit more open. So actively beginning to arrive into this flow, even though we're in a moment of stillness. Now opening your eyes is up to you. You can keep them closed, but if you need to see, that's fine. Tent the right fingertips out in front of you somewhere. You can tent, you can have the palm flat, you can also use a block, okay? <laughs> Use the back of the tricep, press the arm of the thigh open, and then peel the left arm open towards the sky and look up. When you twist, you wanna make sure your whole body doesn't go with you, so I say less is more. Right, and so just kind of find what you need here. It's a gentle offering. You're turning your ribs from right to left, and you're looking up a little with your eyes. Your thighs are not turning in, they're actively rotating open. And run a little bit more breath through those tented fingertips all the way through the top left arm. Come back to center, hands back to prayer, reset. Slide the left arm somewhere out in front of you that works for you. I like, I'm gonna use a tented fingertip and then peel the right arm open and look up. So the ribs move from left to right subtly. The seat does not come up off the ground. Everything stays nice and aligned. And you just create this gentle offering right here. An activation, a connection to your breath, and a subtle opening. Come back to center, hands back to prayer. So now, at this point, you're gonna to start to lift yourself up and you're gonna turn your feet so they're completely parallel to one another. And your arms are gonna rest on your thighs. This is called a bear squat. The hands are still in prayer. Just feel your weight, it's kind of like chair, except most people in chair pose don't wanna get this low and don't feel the weight move back this far. So this is a good practice right here. This is great for activating and strengthening your thighs and your core, the sides of your body are lifted and I want you to create a little bit of an up dog in your upper chest. Perfect. And just be patient, you're gonna to start to feel. Feel your feet, feel your outer blades, feel your arches lift, feel your butt kind of engage and your thighs move back. Now pause here or stay here. Arms are gonna reach up, index fingers, point, thumbs cross, Anjali Mudra, biceps frame your face. Good, keep moving your weight back into your heels. Keep letting your thigh bones slide back, lift the torso, lift the throat, lift the chest, look up with your eyes.
Stay with it. Slowly press to a standing position. The feet are wide. Drag the hands to prayer at heart center. Good. So come to the top of your mat. Keep your feet for the start. Hips width distance. Hands to prayer at heart center. Reach up with your arms. Look up with your eyes. Dive over those bent knees. Forward fold. Come to the fingertips. Long spine. Look forward and pause. Create a little up dog with your upper chest. Exhale, fold again. Root your feet, come all the way up to a standing position. Contract the thighs, lengthen the tailbone. Drag the hands to prayer at heart. So a few times like this. Energetically reach your arms up. Exhale, fold. Good. Come to the fingertips, long spine, or just slide your hands to your shins. Exhale, fold again. Root to rise. Link movement with breath. Hands to prayer at heart. Drop your arms. Focus on little things. Slide the arms up. Look up a little more. Dive again over bent knees. Come to the fingertips, long spine. Fold one more time. Root to rise. Come all the way up. Energize. Hands to prayer at heart. Drop your arms. Reach up bigger. Dive again over bent knees. Come to the fingertips, long spine, plant your palms, take two big steps back and find a plank. Plank position. Now I'm reminding you always that plank position can always be taken, supported with your knees down. So if you're working through something physically or mentally or emotionally, you give yourself a little break. This is the place to do it. Rock more weight forward onto your tippy toes. Find a dristi, a point of focus. A lot of teachers throw out these uh, Sanskrit words and people have no idea what they actually mean. So as we move through the practice, I'll just remind you, draw the belly in, focus on outer arms, kind of hugging in, and feel like you can kind of move your chest through your arms in a sense. That kind of helps me open up my throat a little. Good. And I know it sounds dorky in a yoga dorky way, but enjoy the sensation as your body starts to feel and kind of awaken. Hips up and back, downward facing dog, and it makes this even more enjoyable. Find your down dog that works. Maybe soften behind your knees this morning. Actively press through your hands and always get in the habit of checking out your alignment. Your index fingers are forward. The creases of the wrists are forward. Your feet are roughly hip width distance. And you're breathing your hips as far up off your shoulders as you possibly can this morning so you can really focus on using your strength and not your joints to hold you up. Roll forward again to a plank. It probably feels a little more natural the second time you go in. Move the eyes to the front skinny edge of your mat. Bend your elbows just in half or just an inch or two if you would like to work a little less or drop your knees. Pause in a chaturanga that works for you. You can also just hold active plank. Restraighten your arms to a plank position and pause. Drop your knees if it's too much. Bend your elbows a little bit or halfway at most. Draw your belly in. Contract your thighs. Keep your weight forward. Straighten your arms. Plank position. We're doing it slow. Bend your elbows again. Supported chaturanga. Chaturanga, active plank. Restraighten your arms, plank. In your plank, take your right knee towards your right tricep, just in the general direction. Not gonna touch, just in that, in that area of that right tricep. Keep looking forward. Slide your right leg back so it hovers in a three-legged plank, lengthen your tailbone. Hug your right knee in. Scoop out your belly a little and just drag it a little closer. You can even see if you can bring your knee and your forehead to touch. Look forward with your eyes. Land your right foot forward. You're in a low lunge. Just pause. Feel like you can pull your chest through your body. So your right hip hugs in. Your back leg is super strong. You can always drop the knee. Left hand will stay down, intended, or block is helpful. Right arm will peel. So if you feel like when you twist, your whole body kind of goes AWOL, slide a block under there. It looks really good. Grip your hips in and twist from left to right with your ribs. Activate your back left leg. And so when I say that, I mean contract your glute, contract your hamstring, and use your quadricep strength to really fire it up. 
give the pose a little bit more breath. What I mean by that is like, sometimes we kind of get stuck. Look down, right hand comes to the ground. Plant your hands, step to a plank, right back to a plank position, pause. Bend your elbows in half chaturanga, or just hold. Restraighten your arms. Left knee, left tricep, just in the general direction. Even if it just goes a little, that's fine. Keep looking forward, it helps. Your arms are straight and they're firm and they're pressing firm into the ground. Slide the left leg back, let it hover. Look forward, hug the knee in, either straight in or you can scoop out your belly a little more and drag your knee into your forehead. Now look forward, land the left foot, pause in a low lunge. Just take a second to kind of set up. Feel the strength of that back left, right leg. Grip your outer hip in. Tent the fingertips or use a block, stack the left arm and peel open, easy twist right here. So if your back leg is strong, it's like plank. If you need to drop your knee and take it a little bit more with support, do that. When you twist, let your throat even open. Keep your neck neutral, the crown of the head over the front foot. Stay with it. Look down, left hand to the floor. Fire up your arms, step to a plank. Bend your elbows in half for a chaturanga. Pull yourself through an up dog. You're like, thank gosh, I never thought I'd enjoy up dog or cobra. Lead with your chest. Hips up and back, downward facing dog. Roll forward to a plank again. Hug your right knee straight in, just straight in and keep your tailbone as long as possible. Step your right foot smack in between your hands. Turn your back foot on a strong angle. A block is useful here. Place it to the instep of your foot. I like to tent the fingertips, but you can have the palm flat and the left arm open. It's up to you. If this is too much, your arm can always rest on the top of your thigh. This is a great alternative to the pose. It's the same posture. Stack the two shoulders to start and just practice the alignment. Back leg on a strong angle so the toes turn in enough that the hip can turn with you. Right hip hugging under. And there's enough space between your side right ribs to your right thigh that you can begin to move them. Now the left arm can stay straight up and down or can come to your hip and you can pause here or you can slide your hand around and take a half bind this morning. It's up to you. Keep gripping your right hip in and how can you lighten the pose? Find ways to make the poses like so you're not working so, so hard and it's very efficient and very effective and you can be in a place that you can hold and explore and potentially enjoy these postures. Open the throat a little, look up, stay with it. Keep turning those bottom ribs. Feel the right foot pressing firm, feel the left leg strong. Stay with it, lean back a little bit, see what you can find. Unravel your left arm if you took some sort of add in here. Without any bounce, pull up warrior two. Straighten yourself out in warrior two. You may even need to widen your stance a little. Side body straight up and down, arms really activated and energized. Pick a drishti, a focus that works for you. Let's hold five breaths. Like squat, lengthen the tailbone, let the inner thigh open, grip your right hip in. Run a lot of energy and good feeling through your fingertips. Use both your arm strength. Everyone looks really good this morning. Straighten your right leg. Turn your right toes in. Clasp your hands behind your back. Interlace them. Inhale your breath. Bend your knees a lot. Exhale, fold down the center. If having the hands bound doesn't feel good, you just let go of that and you rest your hands on the floor or blocks. Move the weight into the balls of your feet. If you come down into this and your head is resting on the ground, tighten up your stance. But I do this pose always with very bent knees. It's just the way my body is. 
Don't feel like you need to be pinned straight. Let the clasp hands, if they're still clasped, drop a little further down towards the floor for more shoulder opening. Let the head go, relax the jaw, relax the face, be patient. Come up halfway, pause. Slide your hands to your hips. Come the rest of the way up. Open your arms back up so your wrists are right underneath your ankles for proper alignment. Keep the left leg where it is, turn the right foot out. You may need to tighten your stance. Right hand to right shin or slide your hand to a block for triangle pose outside a calf is ideal. So nice and light. This is not a back bend. You shouldn't feel any pressure in your low back. If you do back out of the pose. Mm -hmm. I'd rather you be up really high if your lower back is sensitive. Here's a good alternative. I'm demonstrating right here. My hand is just pressing into my upper thigh and I'm really getting out of my low spine. If you're looking for more, you can grab your lower ankle. Beautiful. Look up with your eyes, open up your chest a little bit more. Grip your outer hips in. And just utilize your breath. There's nowhere to go. Look down, circle both hands to frame their front foot, but lean onto your left palm. Yeah, we're gonna go right to a side plank, Vashistasana. If you want to modify, Top leg can stay bent in half this morning. That bottom left leg will stay strong and flex, or you can stack the two feet on top of one another for their traditional way. Any of these options work great. Lift from the side body, energetically reach up with your right arm, and make sure your top hip isn't peeling open. It's stacked over your bottom hip. Flex your feet a little bit more and lift a little higher. Plank position, pause. Either hold this or lower halfway and hold the chaturanga, it's up to you. Bend your elbows in half or just hold an active plank. Draw your belly in, re-straighten your arms, plank position from here. Hug your left knee straight in. Draw close to you. Glide your left foot in between your hands. Turn your back foot on a strong angle. Utilize a block here, place it to the instep of your foot and set up for a B variation of extended side angle. Start with your arms straight up and down. Know the modification arm can just rest on the top of the thigh, but if you're doing this, you're very light with your left arm. Grip your hip in, actively press through your right foot. Use the blade of your foot, it really helps. Lean back a little. Grip that hip and then turn your bottom left ribs up. Now the right hand can stay as it is, this is great. Or if you want more, hand can come to your hip or can wrap around for a half bind. It's good to take things in steps so you can see how your body kind of responds and you know if you need more or less. Turn your throat, turn your chest, look over your right shoulder. Lean back a little bit and then settle in. Sit a little deeper into your front thigh if you can. Stay with it, a few more breaths. If you took a half bind, unravel your arm first, anchor your feet and your legs, pull up warrior two. Lengthen your side body. You'll notice sometimes if your waist is leaning forward, you need to use more of your back right arm to straighten yourself out. Lengthen your tailbone, open up your left thigh. Feel the feet. Close your eyes, a few breaths, and just let your body kind of run its course, your breath run its course, your mind kind of shut down a little. And you start to feel, enjoy that. Sit a little deeper. Two more.
straighten your left leg turn your left foot in interlace your hands opposite grip opposite thumb opposite baby finger bend your knees a lot everybody lift your hips and then fold in half and let yourself go and then you adjust once you forward fold maybe your feet need to walk in a little closer this morning maybe you need to uh, let go of that bind maybe it's too much just let the hands kind of drape to the floor but move your weight into the balls of your feet let your hips lift up and let your belly and your torso move closer to the front of your thighs. Let your head just go. Drop those clasped hands down a little bit more. Feel your feet, feel your legs. Come up halfway, pause. Take your hands to your hips. Come the rest of the way up. Open up your arms nice and wide. Turn your left foot out. Set yourself up for a triangle. Straight up and down with your torso. Left hand to left shin. Somewhere along that leg that works for you. Closer down to your ankle is going to be more intense. Hooking the big toe is the most intense. Use a block to the outside of the calf as another alternative. Slide the right arm up. Just keep in mind your front leg should have a little micro bend behind it. Lots of space from your waist to your armpit and your thighs. So you're not just dumping down. No sloppy triangles. Look up with your eyes, open your throat, open your chest, and twist your ribs towards the sky. Last little here. Make your breath a little bit more powerful. Soften the shoulders. Look down, circle both hands to frame your front foot, but this time lean onto your right hand and set up for Vashisthasana side plank. You can bend the top leg in half. I'm demonstrating here, actively engaging your right leg and stacking the two shoulders. This is a great alternative. You can drop down to your forearm. If you're fighting this pose too much, you can stack your feet. Don't fall into the fireplace like I almost did. Lift up through your waist, look up. Press away from the floor. Here we go, guys. It's getting good. Plank position. Chaturanga Dandasana. Pull yourself to an up dog. Try and enjoy it if possible. Open your throat. Open your chest. Point your feet. Hips up and back, downward facing. Land your right foot forward into a low lunge. Pause. Actively press through your feet and your legs. Good, come to your fingertips. You're gonna bring your arms forward just like this and hover. This can always be done with the back knee down if you need to take less out. Interlace your hands and press through your palms. So it looks like this. My hands are clasped and I'm pressing through my palms. My head is in between my two arms. Pause here. Grip your outer hips in. Feel your belly draw in, feel your waist lift. Press through your feet, start to lift your torso. Crescent lunge, keep your arms as is. Now lengthen your arms straight up. Now as you lift your arms up, feel like you're lifting your hips up off your body, but as you do that, sit deeper in the lower half. Draw the belly in, press through your feet. Keep your arms straight up and down, fire up your triceps. Just let go of your clasped hands like you're holding something and stretch your fingertips straight up. Awaken, hands to the floor, vinyasa, or right to a dog. It's up to you what you want to do. Mm -hmm. Let yourself just move at this point. Land your left foot forward, low lunge, pause. Get your legs set before you just bounce into the pose. Yeah, steer your hips back, actively press through your back leg, reach your arms forward. Interlace your hands. If you could figure out which way you didn't do, good luck. Press your hands. Let your head kind of frame in between your two arms. Grip your hips in, draw your waist in, press through your left heel. Feel the strength of your legs, you're all really strong. Start to lift slowly up. Hip points lift. So now as your arms need to grow towards the sky, your hips, your waist, everything is lengthening, but the lower half of the body needs to keep riding down. So you're kind of being pulled. It's like a rubber band, but just enough pull. More breath, let the left thigh slide back into the hip socket. Press actively through your legs and your feet. 
Keep the arms straight up and down. Just separate your hands like you're holding something. Really fire up the sides of your triceps. Feel your outer hips grip in. Hands to the floor. Vinyasa or right to a dog. It's up to you. When you get to your down dog, land your right foot forward. Turn your back foot on a strong angle. Come to your fingertips. Pause. Back foot is turned enough that your thigh can be moving forward. Your right hip steers back. Arms reach forward. Yeah, same thing. Interlace your hands, pick a grip. Biceps frame your head. Steer your right hip back. Draw your left ribs, waist, and thigh forward. Press thumb through your feet. Start to pull yourself up. Press thumb through your arms. Spin your left ribs forward. Steer your right hip back. Good work. Sit a little deeper. Separate your hands over the top of the head. Hug in. Hands to the floor, vinyasa or not. Press to the tops of the feet. Take a new breath if you're taking the up dog. Hips up and back downward facing. One more time like this. Left foot forward. Don't rush. Turn the back foot on a strong angle. Come to your fingertips first. Steer your left hip. Kind of hug it underneath you. Reach your arms forward. Pick the opposite grip. One last time. Flip through your palms. Steer the right side of your body. That's coming from your back leg. Grip your left hip in. Press firm through your feet. Start to lift up. Warrior one. And I think it feels really good. Sit deep. Left hip back, right ribs. Move it forward. Lift a little bit more with those in interlaced hands. Yeah, separate your hands. Reach through your fingertips. Find more space. Hands to the floor, vinyasa. Upward facing, press through your feet. Everyone looks really good. Hips up and back, downward facing dog. Take a deep breath in. Take a loud breath out. Look, uh -huh. Look where you want to go. Step or float your feet to the top. Long spine on the inhale breath. Exhale fold. Sit into chair you thought I forgot. Yeah, chair pose. Feet together, legs together, unless you've got sensitive lower back. My recommendation would be to separate your feet a little bit. Press to stand, hands to prayer. I mean, chair feels easy after doing that bear squat, so enjoy it. Just two sun bees. Here we go. Stretch the arms up. Sit deep into chair. Dive over bent knees, forward fold. Come to the fingertips, long spine. You can step, step, you can float through your vinyasa. It's up to you. Up dog. Hips up and back, downward facing. Right foot forward, back foot on an angle, warrior one. Listen, if you like crescent lunge better, you take that. Hands come down. Now we're gonna move breath to breath. Chaturanga, don't rush though. Up dog. Hips up and back, downward facing. Left foot forward, back foot on a strong angle, warrior one. Hands come down. You should be right set up for a plank. You shouldn't have to do too much. Upward facing. Hips up and back, downward facing. We'll meet here and we'll pause in our down dog. You should feel your thumb, your index finger, your baby finger, your outer arms, everything nice and engaged. Look to the top of the mat, walk or step your feet there. Long spine on the inhale, exhale, fold over yourself. Sit again into a chair, move the weight into your heels. Good, press to a standing position, drag the hands to prayer, drop your arms. One more, slide the arms up, sit one more time, chair. Dive over bent knees, forward fold. Come to the fingertips, long spine, create some space. You can just step, step to plank, and then lower halfway, upward facing, point your toes. Hips up and back, downward facing, right foot forward, back foot strong, or crescent lunge, warrior one. Here we go. Hands come down, vinyasa or not. You can go right to a down dog, however you feel. Once you get there, though, left foot lands, Back foot strong, warrior one. You look good, Jody. Yep. Hands come down. 
plank position. Bend your elbows, chaturanga. Upward facing dog point. Downward facing dog back. So if you have blocks, have them at the top of your mat. You'll probably need one right now. Right foot lands, back foot strong. Warrior one, come on up. Come up to a regular warrior one on this side. Yeah. Drop your arms by your side body. Interlace your hands. Yes. Inhale the breath. Lift the chest. Keep sitting into your front thigh and use the strength of your back leg. Come forward to humble warrior. Two ways to take humble. You can just come down and kind of hover or even rest your stomach on your thigh and just really work on steering your right hip back, grounding your feet and taking your left thigh forward. Or you can come down and kind of get in there. Right shoulder will snuggle, but my torso, as you notice, is turning towards the ground. My head can soften, so I'm not opening up at all. My hips are squared towards the front part of the mat, not turning towards you. Grip your right hip underneath you, press firm through your back leg and hold. If your hands are clasped, see if you can drop them a little further down. Activate the legs and the feet, come up like about two or three inches, just enough that you hover. Take your left hand to your hip, slide your right arm forward. Just do this much. Reach with a block, this is where the block comes in handy. Off the edge of the right baby toe enough that you can float up and find a half moon. Now if your balance is rocky today, you can always go to a wall and lean up against it. Rip your right hip in, stack the two hips, and then eventually stack the two shoulders and maybe the left arm extends up. Really nice, everyone. Turn your bottom ribs, so your right ribs, towards the ceiling. And then look up a little with your eyes if you can. And if you fall, who cares? It's just yoga. You get back in. Lift a little more from your inner left thigh and flex your left toe slightly more. Keep gripping that right hip underneath you. Two more breaths. Look down, left hand comes to the floor, pause. Square your hips, slide your feet together at the top of the mat. Sit again into chair, unless you need to separate your feet, you can go ahead and do that chair pose. Bring your hands to a prayer, a strong prayer. Inhale the breath, hook the elbow, turn towards the right. Lower back is sensitive, by all means you can stay up a little higher. Keep hugging the hips underneath you. Keep sliding the knees back so they're aligned. Good, open up your arms if you want a little more. And get in there. This is one that we kind of shy away from. Nothing to be shy about here in the chair twist. Go for it. Keep the hips low, keep the weight in your heels. Pull around to a chair. We're gonna do it this way today. Keep the arms really active and straight. Just press up to stand, but keep the arms lifted. Draw the right knee in, just like this. And I'm doing it this way because everyone's balance is different. Like some of us just traveled or maybe coming back off of injuries. This is a good place to stay because you can really work your balance, your strength, your core. If you would like to move on, grab the big toe. The toe should naturally come towards you. Left arm's gonna stay up or can always slide to your hip. Extend the right leg straight forward. Good, I see some good feet in the camera. Perfect. Soften the right hip. Yes. Energetically reach to the left side of your body. Draw that left thigh back. This is one we do not wanna feel in our lower back. So if you do, back out. You can always do this with a bent knee and your hand can rest on the front of that kneecap. Stay with it. We're not doing anything else in this pose except this. So just work on your breath and softening. Now draw your core and keep the lift of the leg. You may need to bend it to a 90 degree angle. Reach the arms back up. 
So just for a breath or two, you're gonna float through a warrior three, right? Very slow. And then a giant step back into warrior one on the left side. And if it wasn't so graceful for you, you just take a moment and you reset. Warrior one on the left side is where I will meet you. Work out your positioning. Make sure your feet are all over the place. Drop your arms. Take a second. Interlace your hands. Inhale your breath. Lift the chest. Exhale, fold. So as you come down, decide what you need here. Maybe you're just coming down and resting your stomach on your thigh. Maybe you feel like you can get in there and get the shoulder to snuggle, but really making sure that your alignment stays. Steer your right hip and your right waist forward. Grip your left hip underneath you. Let your head go if you're going for that option. I find if I focus on the outer blades of my feet, it really helps. Maybe drop the hands down a little further. Couple more. Keep the legs strong, grip the outer hip in. Come up just enough that you can hover, okay? Yeah, bring your right hand on your hip, slide your left arm forward, grip that hip in, that left foot's gonna stay forward. Now reach for a block and float to your version of half moon. Now I know my foot wants to go for a little dance here, so that's the point where we really wanna focus on keeping that foot forward, gripping the hip in, and then stacking the two shoulders. Lift up for your half moon. You can always go to the wall. Spark up the right toes, keep the waist long, and then look up with your eyes. And if you fall, just come back. Grip that left hip underneath you. Stay with it. Just stay a few more breaths. Look down, right hand to the floor. Square your hips first, slide your feet together. Sit again, chair, with excitement. Chair pose. Drag the hands to a strong prayer. Inhale the breath, hook the elbow and twist. Looks good, Reg. Watch your right knee, everyone, that it doesn't slide past your left. Yeah, and that generally comes from your hips. So just really imagine sitting back into a chair, keeping everything really even. Nice, Jody. Crowd of the head forward and then look up. Maybe you wanna open up your arms. Yeah. Good work. Stay with it. Keep moving that weight back into your heels. More breath, more feeling. Focus on the strength that you have. You all have a lot of it. Press firm through your legs and your feet. Pull around to a strong chair. Now really press down. Keep your arms hugging in and the arms straight press to stand and just pause. Stand now on your right leg, hug your left knee and just do this much because this might be where you kind of hang out today. Took me a long time to be okay with doing less in this practice and knowing that you're still gonna get a lot. Grab the big toe if you're moving on and extend the leg forward if you're going there. Soften behind your knee, it doesn't need to be pinned straight. Left shoulder must draw back, right leg strong. And the hardest part, soften your left hip. Fix your eyes and just breathe. Lengthen your tailbone, draw your belly in. Wherever you are, stay with this. Keep the lift of the leg. Bring both arms up. Lift your core, lift your ribs, lift your belly, lift a little higher. Float through a warrior three. Very brief. Giant step back this time, crescent lunge. Everybody take their hands to the floor. I find that sometimes we get very sloppy. So just bring your hands down. So you're gonna be in a low lunge right here. You arrived. We had a soccer pickup. Okay, reach your arms up. I heard little cleats running through the house. Stretch the arms up towards the ceiling. Good. 
hands to prayer. Inhale the breath, hook the elbow and twist. Otherwise I was gonna excuse myself. I'd say I'd be right back. Just hold the pose, I have to go drop them off. Squeeze the hips in and turn to the right. So crescent lunge with a twist. Guys, if you need a break, drop your back knee and take this with a supported knee down. The feeling you want is that you're leaning back a little. Yeah. So you can really get in there. Press through your right heel, activate your back leg, twist open. Two more. Look down, take both hands to the floor. Okay, straighten your front leg and step your back foot in. So you have about three, three and a half feet. Walk your right foot to the right. Take your hands to your hips, pull yourself up to stand. So right here, uh, take your right hip back and your left hip a little more forward. Reach your arms straight up, good. You're gonna come halfway down, move your seat, your hips back, like someone's got you by like a stretchy band. And then the left hand can rest on the front of your shin and the right hand can come to the flat part of your back or go ahead and use a block any direction that you want. If you're looking for more intensity in this pose, you can go down lower, grab onto the front shin and ankle, lengthen your hips back, and then spiral the right arm up towards the ceiling. So there's something for everybody here. You could take two blocks, anything goes. But breathe into your throat and chest as your legs kind of anchor and your hips move you back. Press firm through your feet. Couple more, why not? Good, look down, place both hands to the floor. Step to a downward facing dog. When you get to a down dog, roll forward to a plank. Bend your elbows in half, chaturanga. Pull yourself through an up dog. Good, press back, downward facing dog. So before we do the other side, I want you to press firm through your hands, okay? Walk your feet as far up as you possibly can. A Couple ways that you can do this, you can stand on a block too. So if I were to do that, it would look like this. We're not going into crow. I'm gonna just come really high on my tippy toes. This is a handstand prep. So the goal is to get my shoulders over my wrists, let my head fall through my arms and place the block or you can just stand on your tippy toes and lift up, hold. Perfect guys, breathe your hips up off your shoulders. You want a very tight positioning. If you have a handstand, Jody, bring it in even closer. Keep walking in. Walk your feet closer to your hands. Let your head go, yes. Breathe, you can go up into a handstand if you want, if you wanna go near a wall. Stay with it, let the head go. Press through your arms, press through your hands, draw your belly in. Good, walk back downward facing dog. Nice work everyone. When you get to your down dog, wide your left foot forward, crescent lunge, let's bring it up. Drop your back knee if you're like, she's out of her mind and I need a break. Drag your hands to prayer. Inhale your breath, hook the elbow, here we go. Back leg is set up like a, like a, a um, plank, so it's very strong if that's where you're going. Hook the elbow, get in there, and then look up. Open your throat, lean back a little. Grip your outer hips, scissor your inner thighs. You know what to do. Squeeze the right thigh a little more. Three more breaths, press through your left heel. Lean back, lean back, lean back. Look down, place both hands to the floor, pause. Step your back foot in, straighten your front leg, bring your hands to your hips and pull yourself up. Steer your left hip back, your right hip forward. Let's go both arms up here, just try it this way today. Anchor your feet and your waist, come halfway down, steer your left hip back, your right thigh forward, and then from here you can work into your twist. Find something that works, twisting triangle. I love this pose. Some of you have visitors in your room. Tell them to do twisting triangle with you. Slide a block underneath your hand, 
stack the two shoulders. Envision someone's got you by the hips and they're pulling your hips towards the back wall. Yeah. Open your throat, open your chest. Go for it right here. Two more. Stay with me. Look down. Place both hands down to the floor. We're not going back to a down dog. Step your right foot forward. Yes. And come back to a squat. So three options. You can hang here and enjoy a squat pose, number one. This is the first one. Number two, you could go to a traditional crow pose. Number three, TT Bhatsana. So those of you that want to try something different, I'll turn towards you so you can see, okay? My feet need to go about the hips of my, width of my hips a little bit wider. I'm going to crouch down. And I'm going to slide my arms underneath me. Palms are going to face the ground towards you. I'm going to try and get my, my thighs around the tops of my triceps, even my shoulders. Press into the hands. Hug the feet. So now you're balancing here. And then eventually you'll straighten your legs. Squat pose for those that don't want to try this crazy stuff or crow pose. Take another breath. See how you're doing. Nice work. Really nice, Margaret. Now if you could get to crow. Swing the legs back behind you. Crow pose. You got it. Step or shoot back or fall down. Meet me in a downward facing dog. Downward facing dog. Wasn't that exciting? That was the excitement of our day. Downward dog. Clean it up. Roll forward plank. Lower halfway down, chaturanga. Pull yourself through an up dog. Point your toes. Hips up and back, downward facing dog. Land your right knee forward. Let's come to a half pigeon right here. Yeah, half pigeon. You work for it. You get a little treat. Roll forward into a fold here. And let yourself just go for a few breaths. Pull yourself up, swing the left leg around, make your leg look like a tree. I'll turn towards you, it's easier. Make your leg look like a tree here. Bring your block with you if you think that your torso is not so open right here. So what's gonna happen is, is your left elbow is gonna come down to the inside of your left leg. Jody, I did this with you when I saw you last. Hands to prayer, and you're gonna turn. So if your elbow doesn't get to the floor, place it on a block, Nancy, place it on a block, and take the twist. But you must flex your left foot, it's like strong tree legs. It's like separate leg, a Janya Shirasana, and then the elbow's either down on the ground or a block, and your hands are in prayer, and you're looking over your right shoulder, and you're twisting. Keep your seat down, keep your right thigh down, flex your left foot. You feel that? Good. Come to center. Right hand behind you for sail pose today. Right hand goes behind you. Left leg goes straight, left arm reaches back. You got it. Yep. Good, come down nice and slow. Slide your right knee forward. Wrap your left foot around for Ardhamas and Drasana seated spine twist. Two butt cheeks down, left hand behind you. You could just hug your leg. This is a cool way to do it. The goal is to sit up really tall, look over your left shoulder and twist. This gets me right in that piriformis which is a good thing. Keep your left foot firm to the floor. Make sure it doesn't roll. Yeah. Good. 
Come back to center. Listen, your legs are going to go like crisscross applesauce, but take your hands to your ankles. Get them in really tight. It's not a, it's not a gomakasana seat. It's just a very tight crisscross legs. And then just fold for three breaths. Yeah. So just, cr it's just crisscross legs, crisscross applesauce. That's it. You don't even need to do gomakasana here. It's just to neutralize the pelvis and let everything go, let the head go. And then keeping your arms really energized, rock onto your knees, step back to a downward facing dog. If you feel like you need something here, take it. If not, just slide your left leg forward and let's go to half pigeon left side. If we do the same thing every single class, we're gonna do the same thing every single class. So it's good to kind of try to move our bodies in different ways, you know, within reason and then fold. Certain things we need to do. Let yourself just fold into the posture. Something doesn't feel right, let me know. Yeah, right side down, right top or right foot down. A little longer. Good, use the strength of your body, start to come up. Lean onto the left side, swing the right leg around. You can just stay facing the front edge of your mat, but I'm gonna face you. Make a tree legs with your, so your right leg is forward, your left leg bends in. Move the block with you if you know that this is like a little bit of a reach, yeah. Elbow's gonna come down to the floor, hands will come to prayer. Yeah, so my elbow is resting right inside my right knee thigh area, and my hands are in prayer. If you're kind of lifting up, then definitely place a block here and then twist open. Flex your right foot really strong and keep your left hip down, your left thigh down. Stay with it. Should be feeling this through your side waist a little. Come back to center, square it off. Left hand goes behind you, right leg is straight. The palm, my palm is facing towards the fireplace and then lift up into what we call sail pose. This is a back bend. Open your throat, open your chest. If you can let your head go, that's great. If not, you keep it up. Lower yourself down nice and slow. Slide your left knee to the front edge and wrap your right foot around for Ardha Matsandasana. This is seated spine twist. Right hand behind you. Just grab onto your right thigh, give it a squeeze, and then look over the shoulder and twist. If you want to hook the elbow, you can. The more traditional way that I learned back in the day was to grab the knee too. Keep the feet grounded on the floor, keep the hips grounded, look over the right shoulder and twist open. Try and move on the exhale breath. Come back to center, neutralize yourself and the shins are crossed, so it's just in a little tighter, so it's just crisscross applesauce a little tighter. Reach the arms out, and then come forward and just fold. Good, pull yourself up, unwind, feet go flat. You know I'm not gonna let you off the hook with a drop of core before we hit Shavasana today. So palms are gonna go flat, feet are gonna stay hips width distance, torso is gonna lift and belly draws in towards the thighs. Lift the chest. Now, with the hands staying down, lift the legs up to a 90 degree angle. It's like a tabletop with your legs. Flex your feet. You can always slide blocks underneath your hands. Yeah, if it's too much, you can always reach the hands back behind you. This is going to give you a little bit more support. 
Good. From here, you're going to lower halfway down to an Ardha Navasana, but your shoulder blades are not touching the ground, everyone. If having the legs out in front of you is too intense, they could be straight up at a 90 degree angle. This is working the core in an ample way. Flex the feet, scoop out the belly, press to the lower back. The hands stay down. Try not to lift through the head and the neck. Lift the torso, press the hands. Navasana, boat pose with your hands down. Same way, knees bent. Draw the belly in. Two more. Halfway, Navasana to Ardha Navasana. Ardha Navasana is a hovering boat. Hands press down, pull yourself up. Navasana. One more. Lower halfway. Keep your legs like this. Arms up, hold. Five, four, three, two, and one. Release. When you hit the floor, bend your knees in half for me. One, two sets of bridge or wheel, okay? And then I'm gonna send you on your way. Lift the hips, slide the arms underneath your lower back and set up for traditional bridge pose or supported bridge if you've had enough. Anchor your feet, turn your thighs down and under, and lift lots of space we created from the tailbone to the backs of the knees. Stay here, you don't even need to rest in between or you can exhale the breath, lower down. And then reset for one finale one, one final one. Flip your palms for a full wheel, repeat or take legs up the wall. Do something, five more breaths. Here we go, if you're gonna go up, flip the palms, tuck the chin, press all the way up. You got it, Jody. Nice, turn your feet forward. And then remember, you're lifting and the spaces that you're, you're getting the lift is from your tailbone to the backs of your knees. You're not lifting from your back. Nice work. To get out, tuck your chin. Nice, Dara. Tuck your chin and then come out when you've had enough. If your legs are up and you want to keep them there, that's cool. If not, bend them, bring them down to the floor. Remove any objects out from underneath you. And then give your knees a big squeeze in towards your chest. Finishing pose should be happy baby. Grab the outer blades of your feet. Pull your knees down around your rib cage. Lengthen your tailbone to the mat and let your shoulder blades relax down. Hug your knees to your chest. Set up for Shavasana. Complete rest. Complete rest right now. Next minute or two, just find stillness. Let go of your ujjayi breath. Tell the others in your house that you are busy still. Close your eyes and let yourself just be. All the work is done. Oh my God, <laughs> sorry. If you need more time, just stay. You can turn off the computer, I won't be offended. If not, take a deep breath in. Take a big full breath out. Bring your arms up over the top of the head. Take a really big stretch from fingertips to toes. 
hug your knees to your chest, squeeze in. And find your way however you like to some way of a seated position or just a finishing off position. I like the hands on the knees, sit up really tall, my eyes shut. And I can just kind of feel the energy and how there's been a shift from the beginning to the middle to now the end of this practice today. Bottle that up, bring the hands to prayer, bow the head, have gratitude always. Lift your head, open your eyes. Namaste. Thanks for joining me, guys. Have a great rest of the weekend. Enjoy some sunshine and see you soon.